Mm. So we're not really drinking tea right now. It's actually pretty hot outside today. And so I'm sitting here with windows open, fans on. And in lieu of tea, we're drinking this like super green organic vegetable juice that is of dubious flavor. It's from the Costco and it's supposedly super healthy for you. But all I taste in it is the celery. This celery juice should not be a thing you mix with anything. If you want to drink celery juice, just drink celery juice, man. You don't have to you don't have to ruin some beautiful like other like you know <laughs> juices that actually taste good with celery, I'm pretty sure. But I'm gonna suffer through it under the assumption that it's healthy for you, I think. I don't know. All I taste is celery. So, anyway, that's enough complaining about celery for the day, I guess. We should look at some Go, yeah? I want to show you my game from the final day of the U.S. Go Congress. And I suspect that some of you guys might be kind of sick of me showing off my own games. Uh, but, you know, I don't teach my class in the summer at the Seattle Go Center. So, here's what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, this is just, you guys might say it's self-indulgent or, you know, you know, not really, you're not learning enough because you're watching me make mistakes rather than seeing what pros should tell you what you should do, but I don't know. I don't care. I hope you're learning something. Um, this is against a uh, kind of youngish, young adult Chinese Kelu. Maybe he's in his 20s. I'm not really sure, but very strong player. And right off the bat, he wanted to play a cross game, which made me hate him because if you want to beat me in a game of Go, just play a cross game. It's really, I don't know, just like... It, it, it hurts me. It hurts me on the inside. I know I, like, I try to be, like, a really flexible Go player, and I know I do value, like, the outside, or overvalue the outside a little bit. Um, but, man, cross games, they just, they just irk me. So, you know, we already talked about another U.S. Go, this, this U.S. Go Congress series about how important psychology is, your own psychology, when you're playing the game. And right off the bat, move four, I'm already losing that game of psychology. And it gets, it gets worse. This is going to train wreck pretty hard in the first 20 to 30 moves here. Just just wait for it. Oh my god, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful train wreck. If you want to see someone lose a Go game really quickly, you should watch this game. And then, if you want to see someone go crazy insane, I'm not going to tell you which player it is. One of us is going to go crazy insane to throw the game into chaos. You should keep watching this game. So, anyway, uh, I approach down here, and he plays a two-space high, uh, sort of, you know, moving into, like, the Magic Sword-style Josekis. And I'm pretty happy here because I know these variations quite well. I don't have the ladder, so I can't play any of the fancy ladder variations, but, uh, you know, I do know quite a bit about this. I'm very comfortable here, right? I've already even made two, two videos about the Lee Sedol ladder game, right, that starts with this Joseki. And so everything's going normal. We play sort of the most most vanilla variation, which is not a simple variation, uh, until this point, at which point he plays this turn, which is a legitimate move, but uh, again, this was the last day of the U.S. Open, so I was already pretty sleep-deprived. Um, if uh, you were one of the many people I hung out with late at night, Sunset Cantina or in the dorms, and uh, stayed up way past our bedtimes, I both love you and hate you for, for doing that. <laughs> because it does not do me any benefit when uh, it's time to play the game. And actually, the one year, I remember the one year it was really bad. The one year I went I went 5-0 and going into the round 6 in the final day. Uh, I'm, I'm still blaming George, man, because we stayed up, number one, way too late. But number two, we're at the bar, like, before it closes, and he orders a pitcher of beer, and then he leaves. And he says, here you go! And so, the re <laughs> so there's only, like, three or four of us left you know, already having too many drinks and we have to drink another pitcher of beer. Uh, and I think two of the people there, yeah, two of the people at the table said they were done. So now it was just me and, and um, I think Nick Blake, Kevin? I can't remember who the other guy was. But anyway, two of us like ended up drinking this pitcher of beer like way too late at night. Anyway, that was, I did not win the sixth game in that in that, that year. Anyway, round six, staying way too late. Uh, I'm already on tilt because of uh, the cross game thing. And then... My opponent plays this sort of thing and finds this move. And not find it. This is actually a pretty well-documented trick, tr uh, trick move that I have not studied. 
And so if you want to pause your YouTube right now and try to figure out how to solve this trick move, I suggest you do it. We can pretend this is Brady's blunders. I know this is a thing that Brady always has his viewers do. It's like, pause the video and try to solve the problem. I always wonder how many people actually try to pause the video and solve the problem, because uh, I never do. Uh, but also, while he's talking, I tend to solve or you know figure out the move bef while he's talking about it, like before he actually says pause the video, so maybe that has something to do with it. But anyway, pause the video. Okay, now that I now no one paused the video, so good job. Uh, anyone have an idea for what to do here? Because what I did was real bad, like, like real bad, super bad. I'll show you what I did first. I just decided let's just try to make shape and get out of this. And I did technically read all this out, but it doesn't quite work for me. But I sort of insisted that it does. Um, white can't, black can't actually separate this, right? So he adds an extra move anyway. Uh, but then this move, yeah, this move just kills everything. Because I can either lose these four or I can lose these five. So it's sort of like take your pick. I'll kill two stones in the process. I guess, yeah, if I lose the five, I get to kill two things. So that's the better deal at this point. And black covers. I play a couple other moves just for Aji or just to make use of Aji immediately, which I probably shouldn't do, because now these two sounds are actually kind of heavy. And I feel compelled to try to make a base for them, which is a really sad move and sort of the wrong direction to play. Um, or it's not wrong direction, it's just weird spacing. And there you are. So this is a train wreck, right? In the end, you can see that if I had to protect these two stones, black effectively got Sente. Black got to kill four, maybe five stones. Got the corner. Um, I get to kill two stones and build the side, and maybe build a little bit of a base on this side, but it's nowhere near... Um, oh, sorry if the traffic is loud, a lot of traffic right now. Uh, the influence, or the, the worth of this central influence combined with the captures. So, I'm already losing this game by a lot. By a lot. But, let's keep going, shall we? Uh, so, this pincer is natural. And he goes in, and again, I'm losing, right? So, so what do you do when you're losing? You, and you, and especially when you get tricked by just such, like, a, a terrible trick move. Oh, I didn't try to solve the trick move. Right, right, I gotta go back. I gotta, like, show you how not to get tricked so you guys actually learn something. Okay. So, if black insists on tricking you here, like this, what you should do, and it's, and it's real scary, because if you don't know this, there is so many re there's so much reading in these variations um, that it's so easy to get tripped up on on one continuation. And that's what happened to me. Like I just I read like maybe four or five variations and couldn't find the one that worked all the way. Um, you have to take this Atari first, and you play here. And at this point, Black should say, "Okay, trick move over. <laughs> just come back and take the stone." And now it sort of reverts to something like Joseki. White can play here and basically quash the stone. Um, black should probably take the corner at this point, even though it sort of ends in Gote, and now white will have Sente. And this is, this is, you know, a decent enough result for black. I mean, black, it's a pretty sizable corner. Um, this white stone's still kind of useful, actually, if white builds up the bottom. I mean, white, this stone is useful in helping block it off. Uh, there is the potential white could, uh, start a co here for a pretty large endgame later, but more than likely or not, black will get this Hane first. Um, so it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Um, and that's why, you know, even though this is a trick move, black is still fine. But, if black insists on tricking white, and he does that by, whoops, not playing this move, but by extending here, uh, this is really bad news for black. Black has now effectively tri tricked himself. Right, this looks like a natural move, but he has no time to play this is the problem. Because now white extends here. And now these three black stones in the corner are going to die, unless black does something, so he plays here. White can take this Atari. Again, black has to respond if he doesn't want to die in the corner. And again, black can play this. This is just all out. And I and I kind of suspect, you know, with it being day six and everyone just sort of tired and burnt out, I really wouldn't be surprised if, if my opponent insisted on this being the trick. Um, because the obvious move to ladder here does not work. Right? This is just not going to work for white. 
all these stones are going to die. And, you know, this group will run out, and game is over. Like, super hard over. No one has to do any more thinking. Everyone can go home early. But this net does work. And the hardest part to see is that it actually does work. Because you have to, you have to read out, you know, at least three or four versions of this thing, right? Let's start with this one. Right? It doesn't look like it works first because, again, this doesn't gain black any liberties per se, but it does uh, shorten white's incente. And now look at the health of this group. Oh my god, we have two liberties versus three. White can't play here, white can't play here, right? This is dead. It you know, definitely can't play here, definitely can't Hane, just dead. White only has one move and it's here. And furthermore, black can keep playing this. And so you have to sort of read out and make sure this loose net situation uh, works. And of course it does work for white, because otherwise this wouldn't be a trick, Joseki. Uh, but white can just play there, and black has no way of getting these four stones out. So that would be a disaster for black. Even though black got the corner, um, black would have to play a move over here, something like this, but then white could still attack it for the rest of the game, even though black has a little bit of shape. Because these four stones are dead, white's super strong and going to make a lot of points in the bottom. All right, so that's one thing you'd have to read out. Another thing you'd have to read out, another version with this net, is what happens if black just comes here. And if black comes here, it looks like white can't cut because Atari, Atari, Atari. But you also have to be smart enough to realize, oh, this Atari isn't a real Atari, this Atari is snapback. And so again, that's a disaster for black. But again, that's a, that's a tricky read if you're doing all this reading, you know, three moves earlier. Four, maybe even four, or, yeah, you need to do all this reading, how many moves earlier? <laughs> Basically, from here. So, let's move 17. You have to already sort of know the status of this net at move 26. And so you're taking move 26 and you're adding on to move, you know, 34-ish. So, yeah, you have to read, you know, pretty solid 17 moves in advance here to know how this is going to go. But, you know, and again, the amazing thing is that Go players do this all the time. This isn't, this isn't weird. You also have to know what's going to happen here. This is probably the easiest read, I think. Is it the easiest? Let's assume it's the easiest. Because this actually doesn't gain black any liberties. In fact, it shorts black a liberty. Right, and there's just no cut here. And there's also no cut here. So you have to... But that's probably the easiest of, the, of those versions. Uh, are there any other versions? Yeah, so what happens if black plays here? This is actually Black's be probably his best move in this case. Uh, white <laughs> has to play this one. And Black will get, you know, maybe some other forcing moves or something and connect up. But we captured the three stones and that's good. Uh, if White plays this one, this is another train wreck. Because <laughs> Black plays here. <laughs> And Atari, and Atari, and White lost the game again. So even though this one looks simple, it can st this is this looks like the natural move, right? But it's still the wrong move. You need to play this one. So the the whole sequence is littered with fault lines and and problems. And yeah, I kind of freaked out. Didn't do my homework. Was too tired. On tilt from the cross game, and just did this. Which is awful. Just awful. So, let's drink a cup of my <laughs> terrible green juice. <laughs> I'm convinced this would be really good if it just didn't have celery in it. <laughs> oh, right, I said no more bitching about celery. Okay. Uh, we pincer. And we play this one. <laughs> Not normal Joseki. But again, I'm going to work really hard to try to use these stones. And I have to play unusual things at this point, right? This is too big of a loss to just play normal, right? Have to have to try to find things. Make something happen. And even if even if Black just, you know, is kind of scared, sees what I'm doing and, is, and just tries to play super solid, even though Black had a huge gain here, you know, if Black is plays a little passive here and a little passive here and a little passive here, this gain isn't insurmountable if he if he just gives up too easily. Like it's not it's not as big as if like white had blown up 
and one of those spectacular uh, trick Joseki variations where everything dies. <laughs> right? I did get a little bit of compensation, so it's still... It's not really a game like White's still losing. I don't want to pretend that I'm not. But, you know, if you can induce Black into making a mistake, just, you know, be creative, I guess, is all I can say. And actually, in fact, Black does make a mistake here, and I'll show you. Uh, Black plays here. We, of course, peep at the shape point. And Black plays here. And I just come out. He takes the Hane. And this is actually a very small but significant mistake right here. He connects this way. And he should connect this way, even though this looks like less eye shape. The problem with connecting this way is later on, if I can force a huge co, spoiler alert, anywhere else on the board, this is worth a lot more co threats. You know, because we get all these threats in here. And furthermore, it also prevents him from cutting directly um, from pushing out. Uh, because, let's say, I don't know, there's a white stone here, and he wants to cut through here. Well, he can do that. But now the problem is, if he wants to respond out here, kaboom, right, blown up. Just one eye dead. Well, not quite dead in this case, actually, but... Uh, <laughs> tough fight. <laughs> white has any other stones here, and we can... We can kill the whole thing. So, if Black had played this move, uh, I would still have to worry about this cut. So that's good. So that's good. So even though we didn't play a normal Joseki, uh, Black made a slight mistake, and we're gonna we're gonna try to make use of that. All right. So now we play this move, and this is just <laughs> not a serious move per se, although. In one of the AlphaGo talks uh, that, that Fan Hui and Aja Huang were giving at the Go Congress, they did they did point out that this was in in one particular situation, um, AlphaGo's number one move on the board, uh, and it's pretty amazing. Like normally, right, you'd always think to come here, uh, or maybe play a reduction move, or play one of these types of approaches where you just build the outside. And again, I was just feeling inspired by AlphaGo, uh, similar to a game I showed, um, I forgot which, which US Go Congress video, but there was the one where I played another AlphaGo-inspired move. And both of them end terribly for me. I mean, these are good, <laughs> good results for White. But, you know, it's good to have that, that, uh, that spark, that muse. Um, the correct answer here for Black, at least I'm, I'm convinced, uh, Black plays correctly, uh, which is actually just to extend this way. I think if Black does anything else, um, I think white actually gets a a good and or complicated result, which is all white wants. So again, but black's playing very solid. There's actually not a lot left here, right? Because if white wants the corner, yeah, he can get it, but it just sort of transposes into the, the, the attached crosscut variation, which everyone knows and is not confusing, and white's territory is very, very small. Right? Like two points kind of small. So... Not worth giving black the entire outside. So I don't really have a continuation, unfortunately, if I just attach and black plays there in this case. In the AlphaGo situation, I'm sure AlphaGo did, but this isn't the same situation, nor my AlphaGo. So here we go. So instead, uh, we do have a stone here. We have to figure out a way to use it. The only way to use it is to chop up the right-hand side and try to throw it into chaos. I think this move... He's a little dubious. I think I, I don't like that move for him. I don't like this move for me. So we both make a little bit of a mistake. I should probably just push up here and see what he's going to do. Uh, if he's going to cover, it seems like I can fight here. So I shouldn't be scared of that. If he does this, it seems like I can just push up again. And now perhaps come back. And now, actually, this move's starting to look kind of decent, perhaps. Uh, so all of our moves are kind of poor here. But he pushes up this way, and then jumps. And then I jump. And he misplays this. Like, again, he's just, he's just starting to, like, hemorrhage mistakes here. Right? Between this small mistake up here. Like, this, this happens so often in, in games, especially, you know, amateur games. Someone gets way ahead, and the other person just starts asking for more and more. And uh, the person who's ahead doesn't really know what to do with that. So instead 
of him just playing this move and just making a base down here, which is what he absolutely should do, he makes this Ko. And so it's a giant, we have now have a giant Ko for life, uh, sort of in the middle of my part of the board. And, you know, uses this threat. I'm actually not convinced this is a good threat. Like, it's a useful stone, but now all of a sudden it actually weakens these three stones quite a bit. So the threat is of dubious quality. Well, that was a big truck. Why are there so many? Oh, there's a truck towing an RV. Why are there so many trucks here today? I have no idea. All right, but anyway, then we play 72. And 72 is kind of exciting because <laughs> this is, like, really committing now to splitting up this entire right-hand side of the board. So we'll have a weak black group here. This We don't expect the side to become weak, but if black leaves it unchecked, perhaps. And uh, we have a weak group here. So, you know, it seems like I have to keep playing. Like, I'm looking to resign. Like, I, I want to resign this game. This is embarrassing, right? I don't want to keep playing a game that's embarrassing. I must protect my honor. Black doesn't let me have a base, which is totally expected. And I just jump out as fast as I can. Uh, actually, maybe, maybe in retrospect, this is better. Like, I know the shape is dumber looking. <laughs> uh, maybe I can't do this because of this peep. Yeah, I was thinking that if black cuts, I can give that up. But that's not really... That's too small. All right, maybe not. Overplay. But again, you have to overplay if you're behind. Uh, so we just jump out. Black does peep at the shape. We just connect. And here, the normal, probably good quote-unquote move is to Atari first and then play here. And I probably should do that. But again, I'm going all out, right? I'm staking everything on this. So I just connect. Uh, which is very strange looking. But the reason is because I'm saving the, to Atari this way to get more forcing moves over here. I have no idea if that's a good idea or not. It probably isn't. Locally, it's a huge loss. But we're going all out, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> this doesn't matter. Black jumps his group to safety. I start to make shape, threaten to cut through him. And now here's the... Now we're committed to super all-out mode, using this cut to get as many extensions as we possibly can. And we come back here and poke at the shape again. So now we're just sort of hand-fighting. Right, these two groups. Uh, come down and cut. We've cut. We've made one eye, which is helpful. And now he counters by attacking my stick. And meanwhile, this co is still unresolved. Uh, I don't really want to win this co until Black invests one more move in making the co bigger. So, you know, I have no. I have no time to win this co. Basically is the short answer, until black needs it to make it bigger. So I'm just trying to make everything bigger on this side of the board, big as possible, so that I have a chance. Uh, this capping move, though, is quite powerful. Uh, I try to get out with the clamp, both getting myself out and poking at the shape of this white-hand side. Uh, black makes an exchange here. This is totally fine, but then now starts this giant co. And kabam. Here we go. Here, hang on to your butts. This loses points, right? Already black is just saying, you know, I just need to win this co, and I win the game. It doesn't matter what the cost. So this is a bad, traditionally a bad co threat, but it is a big co threat. And I'll take the same. Threaten to save that group, kill the corner, that sort of thing. So black responds. So I take the co. Threatens to come through and just eat this cleanly. And again, if he eats that, then I don't get to attack this thing anymore, so we can't allow that. So I play this Atari first. To make, uh, I'm not sure, maybe I should respond, but this makes sure I have eye space down here. So this is a really big Atari. So, I don't know. I don't know what's better. Yeah, because taking this is Sente to cut off those two stones again. Uh, but now we have this. And we take the Ko. He connects, I connect, or capture. He takes. I now get to keep using all these threats over here. And now he comes out, tries to come out and counter clamp this group. At this point, I fix the co. I have no idea if that's correct or not. Like, there's none. Just no idea. 
I do still have a threat over here, but he has threats too. I mean, there's just so many more threats on the board. Uh, and then Atari's a stone, so it's starting to look like he's going to be able to make an eye right there. I still got to get my stick out. If so we can get the stick out, we can still counterattack this group. And we do this cutting sequence. Take this Atari, does not want another Ko. And I play this peep, and now we cut this way. So we're just fighting for our lives here, or at least I am. I'm reading a lot of this out, and I need to play there. Now, in the game, or after, the, I really want to find time to play this move. And in the game, um, my opponent, after, well, I should say after the game, he kind of thought I should move this out right now. But I don't, I don't think I can do that, right? I mean, I have to, can I, maybe it was a move later. It must be a move later at some point. Yeah, here. Instead of connecting these two stones? No, but I have to... Eh. I don't know. We, we After the game, we sort of fought about when White would have time to move these two stones out. Um, I just don't know when that time is. I don't. I didn't. I, I still can't see when there's time. But he th he thinks I should do this instead of this, um, which which um, is probably true. <laughs> this is probably unreasonable. But game on. Or maybe I can still do it here. Actually, I could probably still do it now. All right, we're we're letting Black go down to one eye. And actually, if you notice, uh, there's. So you might be wondering, like, why doesn't this work? Because uh, black, because white plays here and plays here, right? And when black tries to turn this into an eye, he can't. And so there's there, there there's you know another fight that can erupt over here, but it's not immediately clear what's going to happen, especially since we're going all out. Uh, here? I'm not sure what the move... Anyway, like, like this could devolve into another fight there. Um, but Black chooses not to explore that direction because it's it's complicated. But Black has a stone here and a stone here, so it should be good for Black. I think he should do that. He thinks I should move the stone out. He th I think he should move that out. So I guess that's a wash. Anyway, he makes one eye. And then uh, I have a really nice Tsuji sequence here. This is probably the sequence I'm most proud of. In this whole game is this cut here, which he has to respond to this way, only move. But this move either lets me take away this eye or connect, right, with this little throw-in cut here. Because I can throw in a stone here, he takes, I come down, now that turns this into a ko, and if he defends, now I'm connected because he can't separate at this point. So I, I felt I felt pretty good about that Tsuji. That's a Don level Tsuji. Um, so yeah, throw in, throw in, <laughs> come down, and take to start a co here. That's pretty magical, right? That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> he's read this out, <laughs> and once he reads it out fully. He knows he can connect here because he has his own Tsuji at S14. I take away the liberty there, and there's the S14 Tsuji. And I'll show you the rest. Actually, I recorded a few moves past where I resigned, because now it just doesn't work. But this was going to be so beautiful. If he can't find the S14 Tsuji, right, and he just starts taking away liberties or something, he probably, of course, even if he couldn't find this move, he'd have to... He'd, play over here first, I think. Oh, this is in danger of shorting him another liberty, so I don't know. Um, yeah, so if he just starts taking taking away liberties, I have to start there, um, there, and actually there's a liberty here that's important. Oh, it's the same. Oh, totally not necessary, huh? Totally not necessary. Oh, yeah, it is. It, oh, no, it's the same. Same. Yeah. 
Sorry. So maybe S14 isn't really a Tsuji. I thought it gained him a liberty. Hmm. No, it's the same. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's too bad. So it's it's one. I have to play one extra move there. Either way, I'm eventually going to need to play it. So I guess it's it's a Tsuji, but like it's going to eventually become a super obvious one, right? As soon as I bend here, he's just going to play. And so yeah, if we spell this out for everyone. We've devolved, devolved this entire side of the board into a, well, let's count it, 4, 8, 12, 14, 18, 22, uh, 26, 31, into a 62-point co. Unfortunately, black takes it first. I don't have a 62-point co threat. Like, the best I can do is this. <laughs> but... Not big enough. Uh, at least I assume it's not big enough. I mean, I resigned. Because <laughs> I can't win a 62-point co that he takes first. Hmm. Well, that's amusing. <laughs> that's, there's no way. Yeah, because he has to just now prevent all this from being points and he wins. I'll just play this. He just plays a move. It's funny though that the score estimator is saying that I win the game now. Oh, but it's giving... Uh, this is kind of a wash. Hmm. There's no way I should win this game. Did I resign too early? Oh, uh, alright. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pause the video and do my own counting. Hmm. Well, my own count, I actually had it as even on the board. Or sorry, sorry, no, even after Comey. Even after Comey, which is amazing. But it does assume that these are dead and these are alive. So <laughs> if black can save those... Or I can kill those. That's a game. The problem is white, black has sente. So either way, it's starting to sound like I shouldn't have resigned. But, I, I don't know. It seems like black can just throw a stone in here. And I have no way to kill it. But it does... It's, it's, I'm starting now to feel pretty bad that I resigned. Because even though... Right, effectively... You know, how many stones I lose? Four, eight... It was 14, right? I mean, I effectively capture four, eight, nine stones there. So... Yeah, it's really... Not that terrible. I mean, it looked like way... I, I assumed after this and after this, there's no way. There's no way. I'm still convinced there's no way for me to win this game, but... Yeah, from a points, but from a points uh, idea right now, it's not. It's not like Black has a has an insurmountable lead, but it's just so much thickness that I think Black can do whatever he wants to do, and that could even just be play here, and I think he still wins. Although maybe maybe there's a way for me to make more points here. It's just really hard. So maybe that was a premature resignation. I, I, I still can't help. There's no way. Like, There's nothing for me to do. And the fact that Black still has this cut, too, is kind of irksome. And this group is now pretty... Oh, this group? Is it super solid? It's pretty solid. I can take that, and then I would need one more move in order to do anything. This is kind of like Sente, though. And if he just takes... Oh, man. Oh man, no, I had to keep playing because if he just played really safe moves, like he could still lose the game. Oh. Oh. But I still have no idea how because all these exchanges, like I made all these terrible exchanges. He captured a 14 stone group, he captured a 5 stone group, right? So that's like 20 points. I'm oh, sorry, 40 points. And plus that's another 20, so there's like a six, 60 points. 
Like, I don't really see... It certainly doesn't feel like White has 60 points on this board. Right? Because you have 30... Well, I guess that's 32. That's, like, 30 points as well. Hmm. Man, all right, I'm just freaking myself out, and now... A little sad. <laughs> hmm. So, good game. I think I've got two more game records in the USGO Congress I want to show, so... Again, if you're one of the people who isn't enjoying watching these, uh, sorry. But it's a roller coaster of emotions over here. How am I still? I'm not. I, there's no way I can still be in this game. I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs>